Hello everybody. How are you? Well, my name is Ida May. Everybody say hi Ida May. Hello back to you. I hope all of you are doing well today. Today I'm coming to you from my home studio as one of the many Paint with Faith artists. Paint with Faith is a mobile motivational paint company and we specialize in motivating you through the arts. So today to get started I want to motivate you just a little bit. So please repeat after me. Say if I believe, I can achieve. All right, one more time <laughs> for anybody who missed it the first time. If I believe, I can achieve. Okay, so I believe in you, and we have one task today, and that task is to complete a painting. So the painting we're going to be doing today is a, a beehive. Um, I was motivated to paint a beehive because of the bright colors. And one of my favorite colors is yellow. And we're going to try to play with creating some yellow and creating a nice nature scene. I don't know about you, but if I see some bees in nature... Sometimes I do run. I'm a little bit scared of bees, but they're really fun to paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started with our background. Okay, before we get started, I'll show you my paint palette. I have some of the basic colors. I have orange, blue, green, yellow, white, and black. We're going to be using all these colors today to create our composition. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our background. And I always like to wake up my canvas just a little bit. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Who said brush your teeth, drink a glass of water? I think that's what I do. So we're going to wake up our canvas just a little bit by brushing it with a little bit of water. This is one of my favorite rituals, to just kind of wake up the canvas. There's one artist who is a, hmm, I would call her a organizational artist, Marie Kondo. And she says, you should say thank you to the inanimate objects around, it, around you that help you to do the things that you want to do. So, I would say good morning to my canvas and thank you. Thank you for being here as a way to keep me motivated and keep me focused on my art and my mission and really my life. So, I think art has helped me to be a better artist and helped me to be a better person by motivating me and helping me to express the joy in my life. On the canvas okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the background <laughs> we're gonna create um, a pale light orange background does anybody know how to make the color orange you mix red and yellow that's right Red and yellow makes orange, or you can just mix your orange with a little white. So if you don't have orange, you can mix red and yellow. And after you get the orange, mix it with white. I think this orange is a little dark for my liking, so I'm going to mix it a little bit more white to get a nice pale orange. When you come to the middle of your canvas, you're going to want to paint the remaining part portion of your canvas with yellow paint. Mm. 
So half of your canvas will be orange and the bottom half will be yellow. This will help us get a nice, beautiful sunset. Oh no! There we go. When I'm painting, I like to paint from one edge of the canvas to the other. The size of my canvas is a 9 by 12. 9 inches wide and 12 inches tall. The size of the canvas makes it a little bit easier for me to paint from corner to corner rather quickly. After you finish painting your entire canvas with an array of yellow and orange, <coughs> excuse me, you want to work the paint all the way up to the tippy tippy top. And when you get to the top, you're done. And you can see here that I have an ombre hue of yellow going up to a light orange. So the next step that we have is let's clean our brush. Find your cup of water and your napkin or your paper towel. You want to stick your brush into the cup pressing down until you push all the paint out of the brush. And you want to push down, push down, push down. When you're done, take the brush and roll it off the rim of the glass. This will help take out any excess water. Now we're going to pinch all the remaining water out of our brush using our paper towel or our napkin. Whoop. Okay. Just like that. Now we're going to paint our beehive. The beehive is going to be painted is going to be painted in three steps. The first step of the beehive is to mix brown paint. There are many ways to make brown paint, but my favorite way is to mix the color gray and the color orange. How do you make gray? First, you get some white paint. I'm gonna dip my brush in my white paint, just like that. And then I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of black paint and mix it together until it makes a gray. The darker the gray, the darker the brown. After you get a gray color, mix in the color orange. If your brown is a little bit too bright, you can add a little bit of black until you get a nice dark brown. Let's try it on our canvas and see how it looks. So we're going to make a beehive that's hanging almost in an upside down 
triangle. We're going to add many rings to each layer of the beehive to show that the bee has built this beehive slowly and meticulously in layers. <laughs> so we're going to come in about an inch from each side. Let's make a little dot. Excuse me. And in the very middle of the canvas, this is where our last dot is going to be for the end of the beehive. So we have one, two, three dots. We can do more dots to show where the rings will be. Each dot will come in in the line of a triangle about an inch apart and each dot should be diagonal these dots will connect these dots will connect these two dots will connect and these two dots will connect let's try it Let's start in the middle. I'm gonna take my brush, loaded full of brown paint, and press down. I feel as if my brown could be a little bit more brown, so I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to my gray paint. <laughs> so that my brown is a little bit brighter of a brown. Okay, can you tell the difference between the gray and the brown? I just added a little bit of orange to make it a little bit of a brighter brown. And now I'm gonna take my brush, do one more. Your brush may be a little bit thicker than my, thinner than mine, and it might take you a few passes to get these thick strokes. So we are going to wait on our friends and until they build this beautiful beehive. And I'm going to let each row have a little curve to the end. And when you get to the bottom, you can have a smaller one. And then maybe a little cap on the end. This is called a gradual or a gradient change. Each row is getting smaller than the row before. So we're going to wait on our friends while they finished while they finish painting their beehives. These are such interesting creatures. They help to pollinate flowers and they also make honey. Honey is a great alternative for sugar. You can have honey in tea. You can have honey on toast. You can have honey, mix it with your vegetables in a delicious stir fry. There's so many uses for honey in the kitchen. And some people even use it as a medicinal drug and the bee sting helps provide some type of medicinal 
purpose is to heal people of different um, illnesses. But I wouldn't let a B6 sting me if I was feeling bad. <laughs> I like making this really interesting shape of a beehive. <laughs> so, while we're waiting on our friends to finish, let's rinse our brush. Before you rinse your brush, find your paper towel so that you can dry your brush once you get it all rinsed. So, I'm going to rinse it out in my cup of water, pressing down. And rolling my brush off the rim of the glass. And pinching to ensure I get all of the water out. And we're going to give our friends a, a little while to catch up. Okie dokie. I think bumblebees are great to paint in the summer because it's just a fun, summery, happy thing to paint. Okay, while we wait on our friends, I want to show you how to paint a daisy. If you see a swarm of bees, a field of, a field of flowers is probably not too far. So let's make a field of flowers. The bottom of your canvas should be dry. Pretty dry. Mine is a little bit tacky, as in the paint is a little bit wet. But I'm going to show you how to paint a flower. If you're ready, you can paint along with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these big white petals. So a petal, these petals are going to have yellow. I think I'm going to do orange. They're going to have orange little centers. So I'm going to make upside down these shapes for my petals. So I'm going to just start with one V. Let's do one above that one. Now we have two, sh two V shapes. One more still, that's three. And I'm gonna make one higher for four. So now you have four the start of four flowers. We're going to ensure our flowers have quite a few petals. So now we're going to add two arms to each V shape. It's okay if your petals overlap because that's how they look in nature. So let's give each V shape two little arms. One, two, one, two, and it's okay if they overlap. Wow. Let's see how you do. Let's put some more flowers at the bottom. Let's start off with our V shape. 
I would suggest load your brush full of white paint. You can see I have quite a bit of white paint. The entire brush is covered. And then I'm going to take a big dash of white paint and I'm going to make a V shape. Upside down V shape. And I'm going to add, if you can add four, that would be great. I'm going to add three because it looks like I have room for three. Based on how big you created your V shapes, you can add as many as you like. One, two, th three. So what's the other step to making a flower? Hmm. Did somebody say give it two little arms? Yeah. We're going to add two little arms and it's okay if they overlap remember it's nature lots of flowers overlap in nature so now is the fun part let's find our orange paint you can use the orange paint you don't have to mix out your brush though but just stir it in just a little bit to make sure that you got a quite a bit of orange paint pressed into your brush. The orange will be darker than the white paint and so you don't have to worry about contamination. So now that you have your orange paint, let's give each of your flowers a nice little button at the top. You can add a circle to the center of each flower or you can add a tall oval. It is up to you. I like the oval quite a lot so I'm gonna make a tall oval. But if you like, you can give each one of your flowers a little button nose. I think our bees are going to really like these flowers. Okay. Let's touch our beehive. It's still quite wet, so we're going to let it continue to dry. Let's rinse out our brush. We'll wait on our friends while they complete their flower garden. Now we can start thinking about how we're going to paint our bees. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing we'll do to paint our bee is paint the body. You can have, as I would say, as many bees as you like. <laughs> you can have as many bees as you like, but let's start off with one. So let's take some yellow paint. and high in, in your left or right corner, make a yellow oval. And let's put one bee somewhere in your bee garden. I'm gonna put mine over here on the right side.
don't worry. You can paint more bees later. Okie dokie. So, we're going to be using the black paint to paint our the body of our bees. But we're going to do a lot of other things with our black paint. So, you don't have to necessarily clean your brush from the yellow paint because black is a very contrasting color. And... Once you mix it with black, yellow and black, you usually get a very um, dark color, like black. So you're going to dip your brush into the black paint, and you're going to use my pancake method. My pancake method ensures that all of the paint is pushed out of the brush. So you're going to dip it in the black paint, and you're going to push it on the front and the back, flipping your brush up on the front and on the back as if it was a pancake flattening it each time until you get a wedge shape. So this would be your 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 wide or your fat side and you see how thin and sharp it is on the tip. So it's wide and sharp. So you're going to do it on the top and on the bottom, flipping up and down like a pancake. Now we're going to use our brush to create a line. We're going to go under Ooh. We're going to go around the body of the B by tracing it with our black paint. Wow, that looks great. I'm sure you're doing a great job. Bees come in all different shapes and sizes. So, don't worry if it's a little bit, if the oval is not a perfect oval shape. Remember, there are no mistakes in art. Just room for more opportunities. So, after we outline our B, we're going to create three lines on our B. Let's start with one line in the middle using our black paint and one line on the top and on the bottom. Let's try that again. One line in the middle, one line on the top, and one line on the bottom. Great job! Now let's give the bee a little tiny head. You can decide which side the head goes on. On the t Is it flying up or down? Up or down? I want this bee's head to be up at the top. So I'm going to give this bee a little dot for the head. And you can decide which side the head goes on. Okay, and we're almost to the point, the step where we give our bees some wings. Let's use our pancake method where we flip the brush back and forth and back and forth until you get a sharp tip. Now we're going to give our bee a nice big wing. We're going to go up and create a arc and come right back down. You can give your bee two wings or you can give your bee 
one set of wings. I'm going to give my bee two, two wings over here. We're going to come back and add some white in the wings to help it give, give it that nice wing look. And what's a bee without a little stinger? So we're going to make one little line coming out of the back of the bee. Okay, how's your bee coming along? Okay, that looks great. Let's wait on our friends while they finish their bees. Okay. While we're waiting on our friends, let's use our black paint to create a place for the bees to go inside the beehive. We're just going to make a small circle, like an oval, in the very bottom of the beehive. Okay. Sometimes when bees fly, you can make a little dashing, a little dashing path for their flight path. We can do that to show that the bees have been flying all around your canvas. Can you create a path to show where your bee has been flying? I'm going to make a little heart out of short dashing lines. Do you want to try it? These are busy bees. <laughs> two busy bees. Did anybody make more than two bees? Great job. Before we rinse the black out of our brush, we can do one more thing with black paint. Let's give our flowers a little bit more definition. We're going to cup under the flower and give the flower a smiley face. Right under the orange with the black paint. And then using the pancake method, that is useful in giving yourself a thin line, you're going to make the brush paint it flat going on one side and the other one, flipping it back and forth until you get a nice flat edge, just like that. And then on each petal, give yourself a little line right in the middle. 
this little bit of extra contrast will bring your flower to life. Okay, wow, that looks great. Let's rinse our brush and add white and yellow to finish up our painting. Remember to pull all the water out of your paintbrush by pinching on your towel or your napkin. And your brush should be nice and clean. But maybe not your fingers <laughs> let's add some yellow paint to our beehive with our clean brush we're going to take some yellow paint this technique is called dry brushing you're going to take a little little bit of yellow paint just a little bit find a blank space on your paper plate to wipe the yellow off until it's just barely enough to paint with. This is called dry brushing. And then you're going to just brush a little bit of yellow paint on your beehive. Not a lot. You don't want to cover the brown. Just brush a little bit of yellow paint on it, leaving the edges exposed. Dry brushing is a technique that lots of artists use as a blending and fading technique. And we're just going to add just a little bit of paint here and there. How is your dry brushing coming? I'm going to do a little dry brushing and you can see not I'm not going to cover my edges and I'm just using just a little bit of paint to just barely spread the yellow. Because I don't have that much yellow paint, I'm going to just go right into my white and dry brush a little bit of white paint on the, the bee's wings. My white paint is not so dark, but I hope you have a nice bright white for your bee's wings. Before we finish our painting, let's take a moment to add a few dots of pollen to our, our flowers. This can be done by using the end of your brush where the bristles aren't. So this end is for bristles and we're going to use this end with yellow paint and add little dots to the tip of your flower. This will be the little pieces of pollen that our bees are eating. Bees eat the pollen and then this helps them to make honey. Be sure to wipe the end of your brush on your paper towel so that you don't get any extra paint on your hands. So, 
How are you all doing? Do you need some help? If you need to go back and add any paint to your petals, you can do that. If you want to add a bumblebee, you can do that as well. Can anybody tell me how to paint a bumblebee? What's the first step? Did someone say yellow? Let's try it. I'm going to make one bumblebee right over here. Yellow. What's the second step? Did someone say black? That's right. We're going to take a little bit of black outline the yellow using black. The next step, we're going to divide the B in half and put one mark on the top and one mark on the bottom. What's our next step? Did someone say, give the B a little face? That's right. I'm going to give the B a little head right here at the bottom. And finally, the bee is going to get two wings. One and two. And now, I'm going to rinse my brush and paint in the white wings. That was fast and furious. At that speed, we can paint a whole garden of flowers and bees. Before we leave, we can touch up any areas that we might want to bring a little extra attention to. How is your beehive? How are your flowers? How are your bees? Okay, this has been such a fun painting to paint with you all. I hope that next time you go in nature, you notice all the things in nature, including the things that sting a little. Okay, before we leave, we have a ritual that we like to sing our song. And the company song always keeps me motivated, and I hope you like it too. Would you help me sing it? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is say the words. The words are, I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. All right, can we say it again together Put a little bit of jazz to it? Okay, here we go. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. One more time. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ida May and have a wonderful day.